okay so, good morning uh, good afternoon students and uh, our esteemed uh, resource persons on the panel sometimes we need to look beyond what we believe exists and to open our eyes to the new possibilities in education abroad we have our panel of experts here today it's my pleasure to welcome the panel and request vanchika bhagat of class 12d to introduce them after which the four speakers will address the students so um, over to you vanchika good afternoon respected teacher our esteemed speakers for the session mr pali verma ms sandhya kathuria ms surbi arora mr praneet singh and dear fellow students we are pleased to welcome resource persons who are here to share the wealth of their knowledge in the field of international universities and colleges with us ms rupali verma is an education usa advisor in new delhi she has been associated with united states india educational foundation for more than two decades she has attended many trainings and conferences including usbt and professional advising leadership program organized by the department of state she has also participated in the regional trainings and represented india at the education usa forum during her advising years she has advised hundreds of students and parents and often shared their success stories with the aspiring students she has planned several initiatives to increase the reach of education usa her brain child sessions like parents meet parents chalo america road show and alumni fair have been institutionalized rupali has also addressed seminars and has been on various panels of discussion on us education along with other educationists ms sandhya kathuria branch manager of si uk delhi ms sandhya has over 12 years of experience in counseling students for overseas education she is here to brief us about uk education and how si uk helps students to submit the university applications in u Ms. Surbhi Arora, destination expert for Canada with more than 11 years of experience in international education and expertise in management, strategic planning, operations, events, marketing, and training. Her expertise involves working with all the groups of institutions, from preschools to higher education providers overseas. She had done her masters from Sambhasis University and bachelors from Guru Gobind Singh Indra Prastha University. Mr. Pranit Singh is an alumnus of University of Pennsylvania Graduate School of Education. By the age of 22, Pranit had led teams of over 250 individuals and hosted leadership workshops for over 3,500 individuals from over 128 countries. At 22, Pranit founded his first venture at Quest in India and US. By 24, Pranit had scaled his organization turnover to over 8 million US dollars and expanded it in. in countries across the world currently pranit is 27 and he serves upright south asia's largest higher education organization and with that i now invite mr pali verma to address us all welcome ma'am thank you thank you so much manchika for uh, introducing all of us and uh, since we have very limited time and uh, all the students you have wonderful opportunity Uh, to interact with different country representatives um let me quickly share my presentation and um uh, one second i will just oh, this is not there I don't know. I just tried doing it, and now I am not able to share it. So these are the challenges of technology. One second. Um, Okay, ma'am. We can wait for a few minutes, and in case it doesn't work out, we could have. Uh, I am not able. I don't know why is it. It's not. Uh, um, I'm not. Uh, Asha, ma'am, you just have to exit your screen so that we Pali ma'am can share. Ah, that is. Okay. 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 No problem. Yeah. Amazing. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. So let me now uh, share it. Have you exited, uh, Anshu? Uh, no, I had uh, stopped presentation. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. And it was working earlier. I don't know what is happening. Are you able to see my... Uh, yes, we are <laughs> starting, starting with that. It's visible now. Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, uh, students and... Uh, my review, my introduction is already done. I'll just tell you about uh, this organization, um, the Education USA, which is the official source uh, of uh, information. Uh, we are supported by the US Department of State. That is, we are uh, completely funded by the US government. And Education USA is your official source on higher education in the US. Um, our main mission is to provide students with the most accurate, most comprehensive current and current information. And the most important is we provide unbiased information to the students. Um, we have uh, a strong presence across the globe at 430 plus centers. And uh, the presence is in 170 plus countries and it's still increasing uh, every day. In India, we have seven centers. We have uh, the New Delhi office is our uh, head office. It's the uh, flagship office. And we have regional offices in Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata, Hyderabad. In fact, there are two centers now in Hyderabad. And we also have it in Kolkata and Mumbai. So anytime uh, you plan to visit these cities, once the pandemic, pandemic is over, feel free to go and um, uh, physically go to these uh, Education USA centers and meet the Education USA advisors there. The question comes, why US? I mean, you have options today. You have options for UK, Canada, um, and other countries. So the question will, um, and you have to think about it, why all these countries? So since I'm representing Education USA, I will quickly tell you why US. So um, US basically uh, is known for its flexibility and the, uh, the, the options it gives to the to uh, study and choose your majors uh, from a plethora of 4,700 plus accredited universities. And I'm not sure if you know about it, but in the US, there are more than 2 lakh Indian students who are at the various US campuses. They have chosen US as their top study destination. Um, the, such a big number, uh, including both public universities, private universities, and the kind of majors, the 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 the, uh, the combination of majors which you even haven't thought about are, uh, is the beauty with the U.S. universities present to the students. I mean, um, you may be interested in doing a STEM field along with a STEM field. You may want to go uh, for um, uh, to study something in social sciences, to study something like uh, journalism, uh, economics, uh, psychology. That is what is the beauty of the U.S. Uh, and the U.S.P. of the U.S. education system, that it um, offers you uh, the kind of options and the majors. Um, I'm sure all of you agree with me, the U.S. universities, they get a lot of funding from both public as well as the, the, uh, the federal system, as well as the private system. And their, um, their uh, labs are at cutting tech. Uh, cutting edge technology uh, with the kind of infrastructure they offer to the international students. Uh, the campuses there, um, it's like a home away from home where they offers a vibrant student and campus life. And that is, again, one of the important USP, which is the diversity on the US campuses. Um, and this is something which the students really enjoy when they make friends, when they do networking. Uh, with um, people, uh, with uh, other students from different countries, I um, learn their uh, system, learn about their um, uh, culture. All this that is where you you feel like it's a home away from home. Uh, the U.S. universities do offer scholarships, internships, and professional training opportunities to international students. Um, uh, at the undergraduate level, the funding may be limited, but it is definitely there. Students been uh, getting lots of funding from the U.S. universities. The only thing is we have to really see which is the right fit for us. With top-notch facilities, you can see that the U.S. universities, they offer rich cultural 
uh, exposure, this, how happy these students are. You can see that once they get their degrees, have the kind of networking they build, that is something which is very, very important and uh, which makes uh, students feel that US um, should be our first uh, uh, preference of our higher destination abroad. Uh, quickly, I'll tell you that in the US, you will often find uh, universities which are public universities, private universities. Public are the ones which are uh, funded by the US, by the, gov by the government, by the federal state. Private have their own sources. There are liberal arts and sciences colleges. Now, this, the same uh, concept is coming in India. In fact, it has already started in India. So liberal arts and sciences colleges are small private uh, colleges where, uh, where the classroom size is small and you have more and more of interaction with the university uh, with the professors uh, there are community colleges which offer you associate degree for two years and they have um, uh, agreements with the, uh, with um, larger universities so you can um, save money for sure but you need to be very very careful when you are shortlisting community colleges um, and um, do discuss with education USA advisors about your options of shortlisting universities including community colleges Undergraduate students go for either for an associate degree or a bachelor's degree or at the master's level if you are interested in doing a bachelor's from India, you can pursue your master's or doctoral program from the US also. Uh, this is the most important um, slide. Uh, in fact, students, you can just quickly take, because we have very limited time, you can quickly take a screenshot or a picture of all these important slides which are uh, which you think will help you. So the step one is uh, research your options where you need to see um, uh, where you have to define your priorities, where you need to see what are your strengths, what are your weak areas, what are some of your um, uh, uh, interests, what are your motivations. You need to understand why do I need to really uh, go for my international uh, degree? Can I do it in my own country with a lesser cost? How will it help me? Um, uh, um, uh, why do I need a specialized curriculum? Um, so all these points you have to really think, you have to uh, shortlist your universities based on that. Again, remember going to the US is a little expensive process. It is a little comprehensive process and it is something which is where students um, um, do get, um, I mean, it's a very lengthy process basically, I would say. So you need to at least have 12 to 15 months with you when you start the process. And the most important is the planning and organizing your stuff is very, very important. You really need to do a lot of time management before you start with the process. So once you define your priorities, coming back to these five steps and the step one, uh, which is research your options, where you have to shortlist universities. Again, we do not um, advise students to apply to a whole bunch of 50 universities. You cannot apply to more than 10 to 12 or maximum 15 universities uh, because there is an application fee which is involved. And um, there is a process you need to understand how should I shortlist my universities, what are the important parameters, because all the students who are attending the session today, you uh, each one of you is different. Each one of you will have a different parameter. So you really need to make a list of all the important parameters, which will include the, the course of your choice, the cost of your studies, um, the location where you want to go, the type of university you want to go to, a public university, private university, what kind of university are you interested in. You need to look at the faculty where, uh, where, which is going to teach you. You need to look at the, uh, the size of the university. Likewise, there can be many, many other parameters which we can definitely discuss. If you are really interested, I'll uh, share my email ID in the chat box and you can contact me uh, once the session is over. We'll come to the second point, which is um, uh, finance your education because finances are important. Before we start with the finances, I would just like to mention quickly here that the entire process of going to the US is holistic. Um, it, is, uh, it is the student who is important to them when the universities are looking at your um, 
applications, when they are uh, the admissions committee is making decisions, they look into your consistency in your academics, they look at your extracurricular activities, your any activities which you have done beyond your classroom, beyond your studies, if you are having any honors program, your scores are important, but right now many of the universities are test optional. So do check with the universities about their requirements. They look in you your leadership skills, your intellectual curiosity, your uh, letter of recommendations, your recommender's voice, which is very, very important, and the fit with the school. That is important, the right fit. How important are you for the university is very, very important. Um, and it goes the other way also. Why should the university actually take your applications? Why is the university in a good fit for you? So you have, it goes both ways. So that is something which you have to really, really understand. Students can improve their profile. Every student is different, as I just mentioned. You can do school-based activities, exchange programs, internships. Um, if you are interested in writing blogs, doing uh, writing articles, um, there are some community services which you can take up, um, um, which, shows, which shows your leadership positions. Uh, you can uh, participate in sports, but make sure whatever your interest is, whatever you are, whatever your personality is, everything will be reflected in your applications. And that is what is the U.S. education system all about, because um, uh, it, 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 it reflects your applications. It reflects the individual. That is important. The second step is funding your education. You need to understand what is the fund, where are the funds going to come from, your tuition, living cost, everything is important. And that is the reason we tell the students do not only have your options limited to a few states. Understand that the tuition has to be paid, but the cost of living can be controlled. So how can you uh, plan uh, the, uh, the list of universities accordingly is the main main uh, this thing uh, th that is the main mantra of your shortlisting the universities uh, you can use the common data set or use the net price calculator to understand uh, the, uh, these minor details uh, of specific universities your sources of funding can definitely be your parents where the maximum funds can come from if you have any sponsors you can go for educational loans the u.s universities do offer scholarships uh, you, ha you can work on campus for 20 hours and you can work off um, uh, and in summer vacations you can work for 40 hours uh, per week. You have an option of opti optical practical trainings, uh, the CPT, which we can discuss in details. This is an important slide which I just wanted to share with you. Uh, this is uh, the, these are the requirements of the universities. You need to fill up the application form. You need to make the application pay the fee. Um, uh, the universities will ask you to submit your academic transcripts from class 9th onwards, so 9th, 10th, 11th, and up to your half release of class 12th, plus the predicted scores which the uh, teachers uh, will give you. Um, the scores are important, but as I told you, schools are optional. So check it with them. Uh, your test of English, uh, uh, to check your test, uh, uh, English uh, proficiency, you can either take the TOEFL, IELTS, the Duolingo test, or the PT test are also accepted by the universities. Universities will ask you to submit letter of recommendations. Check out who are your recommenders. Meet them, speak to them. They will write your recommendations. They, uh, universities want to look at your writing uh, skills. Uh, they want to understand from you uh, when you write uh, essays uh, for them. Uh, so ma many of the universities will give you prompts on writing these essays. Uh, some of them will give you personal statements. There will be supplementary essays from specific universities. You have to do all that. And this all makes that you need to have time on your side. If you are looking for funding, whether it's need-based funding, need-aware funding, you have to fill up the financial aid forms. You need to submit your activity list or your resume to the universities. And many of the universities may take your interview. So that is what you have to be prepared for. So um, this is the step three, which we covered. Step four is where you have to apply for your student visas once you get admits. You have to apply for your visa. There are lots of myths regarding the visas, but let me just tell you that the U.S. universities with open arms, they welcome the international students. If you know your reason for studying in the U.S., if you know who's going to fund your education, you know your short-term and long-term goals, your, nobody can refuse your visa. And Education USA works very closely with the American Embassy, and we do a lot of sessions on visas and make you prepare for your visa interviews and everything. 
we uh, will after your visa we'll help you on your pre departure to make sure that your um, transition is very smooth to the us universities i want all the students to please save this date we are having an undergraduate virtual fair on september 3rd we will also be sending information to your counselor and to your school so that they can um, um share it with you there are more than 100 universities which have signed up for this particular fair we will send you the link to uh, attend this fair but please save the date as of now you can connect with us you can download our mobile app either going on google play or app store these are the list of the centers you can uh, just take a um, the, the contact of all our centers you can take a quick um, screenshot or a picture and uh, please make sure that you um, contact uh, any of the centers and talk to an educational advisor you can sign up on for our for getting our updates including including our newsletter uh we have lots and lots of sessions going on these days i know you people are also kind of tired and um, this, we have all reached the saturation point but then till the time we are at home and we don't have any other option we have to attend these sessions uh virtually only so go on uh, go to our website and look at the calendar of events um we are starting with our application boot camps also now and with all the five steps which i have discussed there will be sessions uh on every five step um we have individual membership also we can i can discuss that later because i think i have to give uh, time to the other speakers we can go for the question answer session i think after all of them have uh, all the speakers have spoken thank you everyone that's it from my end thank you for guiding us ma'am i would now request ms sandhya arora to address us all many thanks manchika and before i begin i would like to give a big thanks to dldav model school to giving siuk an opportunity to facilitate their students and to achieve their students who are aspiring to go abroad for their you know for uk as a destination and we can become a part of achieving their career goals and their careers destinations now when i speak about siuk i am sandhya kathuria from the new delhi branch Uh, SIUK is one of the pioneer platform for aspiring students who are planning to go to UK for their education. Even if you are looking at undergrad, postgrad, or MBA or PhD level, we facilitate with the entire process. At SIUK, we are actually an international and a global company, having seventy-one global offices in thirty-five countries, and in India as well. We have our spread in the entire Pan India. So you name the city, you would have an office there. now at siuk all our counselors are well trained and they are well trained by the university partners which we have and also by the british council we provide free and transparent counseling sessions to all the students and make sure that you reach your dream destination also about you why you should actually choose uk as a destination now when you talk about uk there are plethora of reasons to choose uk as a destination just to give you a few reasons here uk degrees are worldwide recognized and uk has been providing and is still providing quality of education to international students for many many years also uk is a multicultural country and it is a vibrant country so it becomes home away from home for students and it's it's a student friendly city so it becomes very easy for students who would be traveling for the first time to leave their families and study in a international environment uk actually hosts a lot of historical and traditional universities to name a few such as oxford cambridge university of edinburgh imperial college london london school of economics and many more uk has recently launched with the new visa which we call graduate immigration tool mm -hmm. which provides students with 2 years of post degree work visa after completion of the degrees so what more can we ask for now if i talk about you in uk international students are also allowed to work 20 hours per week which will help you to polish your skills before you hit the market world more than that in uk after your schooling is complete you would have plethora of options and disciplines to choose from 
not just business or finance you would have a lot of traditional courses traditional streams to choose also you have a lot of upcoming courses to choose from which i'm going to speak in the earth further slides now as i said uk hosts a lot of universities so we have on one side we have the oxbridge universities which we are catering when we are talking about the top tier of the universities like university of manchester mm -hmm. imperial college london university of cambridge london school of economics on the other side then we have russell group university which is a consortium of 24 universities which is again well focused on the research then we have modern set of universities wherein they offer traditional degrees also they have a lot of non-traditional degrees to choose from you know to choose from anthropology to choose from dance as a course to choose from psychology as a course so in a nutshell every student would have something or the to, something or the other to choose from unlike wherein you have to just go the traditional way so you would have every possible stream what you can choose at also, uh, since we're catering to uh, school students, I'm going to speak only about the undergrad courses. In UK, we have undergrad courses, which is Bachelors of Arts in the stream you would choose for. Then we have Bachelors of Science, which we call it a BSc degree. Then we have Bachelors of Education, what we call B. Ed, followed by Bachelors of Engineering, which is B. Eng, as it is known as. Right. Different courses would have different duration, but otherwise in UK, the undergrad degrees is for three years. You also have an option to choose it for four years, which we call it with placement. So the undergrad students are allowed to pursue their undergrad and also an internship or a placement club in their undergrad degree, what we call it as sandwich courses. Now to tell you about the popular courses, in UK, you can choose from accounting and finance to art and design for the students who are creative and wants to pursue. Then we have medicine and dentistry, followed by engineering, law, physics. Then we have biotechnology. We have courses in biotechnology, environmental science, and management studies. We have mechanical engineering, architecture, aeronautical engineering for the aspiring students. We have physiotherapy, philosophy, sports science, and physical education. But somebody who is really into sports can also pursue different courses related to that. Now, we all know about UK because right from our tradition, we have a lot of alumni who have passed on from UK, you know, right from Mahatma Gandhi's time to the recent uh, creative uh, directors, which we have, like, for example, we have Guninder Kortchata, she's an alumni and a director of Bendit, like Beckham. So you can see the versatility of degrees and versatility of the people who have studied from UK. And we have lots and lots of universities, uh, again, offering these kind of degree courses. We have uh, some modern universities. Again, in modern universities and the traditional universities, you have an opportunity either to go for city-based universities or on-campus-based universities. Especially for the undergrad students who would be going for first time, you would have closely knit campuses and environment which becomes a very satisfying factor for parents as well, if they're sending you away from their uh, domain to study abroad. So you would have all the facilities available from the universities. Also, you know, UK universities definitely support international students financially. We have scholarships available by UK universities, and SIUK will make sure that the who, students who are well-deserving will be able to secure some part of scholarship provided by the universities you finalize on. So we will give you complete uh, assistance on the same. There would be a scholarship essay which would be required to write in order to describe the university. Why do you feel a you are a deserving candidate for that scholarship? Right now, as I mentioned earlier, UK provides part both part time and full time job opportunities for international students. So you have 20 hours per week, which you can work part time uh, alongside with your studies. After completion of your studies, you would be entitled for two years of post-study work visa, which we call it graduate immigration route, which you can actually avail once you've successfully completed your degree. Also, when you reach the UK, it is just not academics. You can actually go to UK and get best of both the worlds. 
you would definitely have your full academic structure international support provided from the universities however you can also take participate and join lot of different societies lot of different sports clubs cricket being their national game you can join cricket you can join hockey football or if somebody wants to get into some of the events you can join different events which are happening there are a lot of art exhibition which you can go and you same like india in uk as well all the festivals are celebrated with the same zeal and enthusiasm be it diwali or holi plus all the international festivals are celebrated and i hope you are looking forward to do celebrate the same once you are in the uk and you can also join a lot of other small small workshops like chocolate making or dance clubs so it's basically everything is available for students not just the academic side of it also the universities in uk provides you with the career opportunity because after all spending 3 years and spending so much you are looking for a return on investment so the university provides complete career guidance on it wherein they will help you with your consultancy projects they will help you with your industry connections they will help you prepare your cv they will help you prepare for the mock interviews which you are supposed to take when you are sitting for your interviews sessions now the intake which we are targeting is technically january 2022 however in uk the major two intakes which is january and september 2022 for so for students who are there in year 12 you can actually target september 2022 and begin your undergrad studies in the united kingdom so you don't have to worry if you're planning to go to uk all you have to do is get in touch with si uk uh, from wherever you are interested so because as i said we have offices across you just get in touch the counselors will help you with the entire process of career assessment profile building we will help you assist with your shortlisting as per the universities and the course you are looking at and the marks you are hoping to reach, achieve in your year 12 we will also help you with your filling up your applications we will help you with your editing of your statement of purpose and the letter of recommendations followed by we will help you with your accommodations scholarships interview preparations and that's not the last we also help you with pre departure services and later whichever university you finalize on we make sure that you get in touch with other students who are going to uk to that same university different different courses though so we will help you with the same i'm going to share the contact details in the chat box so that everybody has an easy access to it so all you have to do whenever you have plans just contact si uk and we will help you with your you know we will help all the aspiring students to reach their dream destination of studying in uk whether it's london whether it's northern ireland whether it's scotland or it's wales in itself and i'm sure you're going to have a best time over there for the for, for the questions whoever has in questions we can take it in the end and uh, so i'm going to um say a very big thanks to all the attendees and all the students mm -hmm. and once again to DLT AV Model School for giving us an opportunity thank you once again thank you ma'am i would now invite ms sulvi arora to address us all um hi hello everyone and uh, yes i too would like to thank uh, team dlv for this opportunity and let us interact with the students who we're looking at pursuing their dreams beyond their home country uh vanshika has already introduced me so well so i'll quickly talk about where i'm coming from uh so i am the destination expert country canada from idp education india private limited uh to give you a brief of who we are and what we do uh well we are the global leaders in the international education services we have uh, more than 120 offices in over 30 countries and we are partner to more than uh, 700 leading education institutes globally uh with a team of about 1000 expert advisors and counselors we help students in their study abroad journey uh starting from conducting IELTS examinations uh which is the foremost requirement to apply to any university or institute outside india we are the all examination to helping students choosing their right course bases their profiles countries they should target institutes they should be applying to uh we assist you with your visa applications in case of us interview preparations 
we conduct pre departures for you to share important information on travel uh, since it's covid now so we, it became all the more necessary event so documents to carry acceptable vaccinations quarantine and every other aspect that you should be aware of uh, we are listed on the australian stock exchange and are 50% co-owned by the australian universities so since we are 50 years old in this in this industry we've been successfully placing students across six major destinations six major destinations that are australia canada us uk and new zealand and ireland so that's what we do for you to make it easier and help you understand the overseas education application process we have narrowed it down to seven major steps uh depending upon the choice of your destination uh, you have to follow related guidelines starting from selecting the program and the university so if you're sure of the program choice we can help you finalize your university options and the criteria that matches your profile and if you're unsure of the program we can help you finalize that too by giving you a brief comparison over the courses available based on your background second step is uh to take admission test so depending upon the university program and your dream destination you are required to take certain admissions test like ielts toefl uh, gre gmat in case of pg student but in your case it would be sat duolingo or pte which is now acceptable acceptable by a lot of universities outside india this helps you qualify the requirement of your targeted university after this comes the preparation of documents and application submission stage documents in your case could be grade 12 predicted scorecard grade 11 and grade 10 uh, grade cards sat ielts toefl test reports letters of recommendation and other university specific documents which together are submitted to an institution for the evaluation universities assess your application and if it gets approved then they get back to you with a letter of acceptance or an offer letter uh, once you receive this offer communication based on your country preference you start with your visa formalities some countries like us requires you to prepare for the interviews too and once you clear that you're ready to fly idp at all these stages help you and get you to your dream university be it the course university selection application submission offer follow ups helping you accept your offers getting you visa ready and pre departures we assist you at every step uh i would like to repeat that uh, we help you explore six more popular destinations to study abroad uh that is australia canada us uk new zealand and ireland i particularly take care of canada here and would give you a brief idea over its offerings known for its immigration friendly it is quality education and economical free structure country is again one of the most sought after destination amongst the international students uh with easy pr rules country attracts a lot of attention from immigrants who are looking at permanent settlement outside india uh hence taking up your studies will not only provide you quality education here but also multicultural and people friendly environment uh with up to max like with up to 3 years of stay back that you get after completing your program in this country basis the duration of your studies of course country gives you enough time to explore your potential and look for employment opportunities Canada's education system is worldwide recognized. Next slide please. Next slide. Canada's education system is worldwide worldwide recognized and the universities are placed well on world rankings. Uh next please. Education system in Canada is under complete uh, direction of the provinces and territories and are offered in four formats to international UG students. you apply at various levels like diploma associate degrees advanced diplomas uh ug degrees and then their pg levels but since we are addressing class 12th and 11th students i'll stick to the uh, ug format these courses are offered by four types of institutions in canada which are segregated as career colleges so these are the colleges that offer you diplomas and certificates and are privately owned then there comes the community colleges which are mostly government recognized and offer you diplomas advanced diplomas and degree options that you can do after class 12 they offer practical learning and industry oriented courses so it helps you get good jobs in canada uh universities particularly are funded by the government and offer programs at multiple levels like bachelors and then masters and phd's too but yeah if you're looking for a four year or five year of degree then it's the university that you should be targeting uh then there is another set of category which is university colleges so a lot of times uh 
it happens that you know you miss your deadlines because of the workload that you have for the direct intakes or you're unable to meet the direct requirements of a particular university then such pathways prepare you for your stint at your dream university without having you put any additional cost or year of study there are scholarships available uh, with this destination like beside being economical one of the most economical destination i would say canada also offers you merit based scholarships uh, on parameters like strong grades english language proficiency test extracurriculars uh, lors and overall profile so that was basically just about canada uh, to give you a brief over other destination that are popular abroad for abroad studies next slide please So Australia, Canada, US, UK, New Zealand, Ireland. Benefits they offer. Here is a country comparison. It can help you plan your finances. For I can tell you, planning your studies in Australia is somewhere between ten to eighteen lakhs. Again, you're allowed to work 20 hours. With UK, this this cost to 20 lakhs. The cost varies somewhere between nine to six. This is the yearly cost that I'm talking about countries, along with your living expenses. expenses that's up to seven to eight in all these countries you are allowed 20 hours right please now that we know about and their offerings how will the right one for you so here comes id picture and help you meet your study or uh to be a slight previous to this video. Application packages uh, 10 months in advance to be able to apply well before. Early applications are always Should be applying to visa I, sorry to interrupt in between. Uh, there is some network issues uh, with Surbhi's laptop. So, ma'am, can I take forward with this? Pooja, ma'am, and others, can you all listen to me? Hi. Yes. Yeah. So yes, now, yes, sir, yeah. Go ahead. If you were wondering, you know, what really there was some happened. network issues in the yeah. office. So, I'll inform students about your mandatory That's test requirements. So for UG, if you're looking for a US, then SAT is the major test requirement for UG students. Otherwise, IELTS, TOEFL, and PTE are the major test requirements. 
uh, acceptable in all these six countries australia canada new zealand us uk and ireland and now last thing about idp now idp is proud owner of ielts examination if students having any queries related to ielts they can reach idp anytime so what is ielts ielts is international english language testing system the world most popular english language test open doors to academic and professional opportunities across all major countries pioneer of for english language skill testing reading writing speaking and listening also we are having our canada fair on 10th and 11th september where colleges and universities from canada are participating if students you have any queries related to overseas education related to all the six countries you can reach us out anytime so what i'll be doing i'll be sharing my details in the chat box for idp if you have queries related to canada uk us australia new zealand and i especially you can write it down to us i am so sorry for this interruption in between and thank you so no, much no dear team thank you we understand thank you sir thank, thank you. you we understand that thank you thank you for sharing your valuable knowledge last but not the least i would now invite mr pranit singh to guide us all thank you vanchika and again i'd like to thank the school for setting this up uh, so of course vanchika has briefed you about who i am i'm a student of upen and so i have been uh, very deeply immersed in the foreign education setup myself i went to uh, one of the world's best universities and sort of can vouch for the fact that everybody who spoke here um, has a lot of weightage to it so uh, when you study abroad there is in fact a lot of learning a lot of skills a lot of capabilities that uh you actually develop which are irreplaceable for your entire course of life what i wanted to sort of run you through is i'm not going to go very deep into which university which course what is the requirement i think we still have time to talk about that uh i just want to sort of broadly speak to you about the vision that i, I am sort of working here with so like one chick i mentioned to you i was running a startup in the united states um we were working with schools across the world but i shut that down to work with upgrad on this wonderful vision that we have for higher education in india so let me explain you the concept so uh, of course like she mentioned we we are south asia's largest higher ed firm we are now backed by the world bank's ifc arm and we're on a mission to make higher education affordable accessible democratized and extremely vocationalized so here's what we do with us you have an option so how we process, uh, how, how we look at higher education for a student is that what does democratization actually mean you choose your course as in here from high school where do you want to transition to as in do you want to do a humanities course do you want to do a business course or do you want to do a stem course then you choose the country where would you want to do it so supposedly i tell you i want to do a bba with 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 my majors in entrepreneurship i give you the complete flexibility and liberty that you choose the country where you want to do it so you like say i want to do it in australia then i would tell you choose the hybrid setting so how many years in australia out of the 3 years can you actually afford to study on campus studying on campus students means at least 20 lakhs regardless where you go if it's in the us where i've studied myself it's beyond 20 if it's in canada or australia it can touch 20 almost for every year australia can actually go beyond that so for every year you spend in india you save almost 20 lakhs of rupees so you choose your hybrid setting then so you want to do a 1 plus 2 or you want to do a 1 plus 3 or you want to do a 2 plus 2 depending on how much can you afford for all of these years regardless we give you the financial aid like i mentioned to you uh, we are actually on a mission to make this more accessible to make this more of, of affordable so any degree that you do with us whether it's a stem degree or a business degree or a commerce degree or or uh you know a degree in hotel management we will bring down the cost to almost 45 lakhs so uh, sorry bring down the cost by 45 lakhs so we're trying to make sure that you can save at least 40 lakhs that we uh, actually allow through our hybrid setting but also give out further 2 to 3 lakhs of uh, financial aid while you are studying in india the other part is like uh, all of the speakers prior to me mentioned there are certain post study work opportunities that you actually get all of those are still given to you anyway so you have a full access to all of those opportunities regardless if you're doing a hybrid setting or not here's what i'm talking about let's say so uh in terms of any so 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 
how we've designed this is that we've got a BCA track and a BBA track. So you can look at it as a business track, track and a STEM track. Let me take you through what that means for you. Let's say you want to uh, do a STEM education course. Let's say so STEM, STEM degrees can only be given by an ABET accredited university in the world. So if, you, if you've uh, sort of decided on doing a STEM degree, and similarly on the converse, if you decided to do a business degree, you go through a standard business or a standard STEM track on upgrad.com. These both of these tracks are further articulated to approximately 10 universities and 10 onshore campuses in the world where you complete the capstone or the uh, degree years of your specialization. So I start the majors, uh, so, sorry, I start the business track with upgrad. I finish that first year and, 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 and then I, I tell the upgrad team, I want to complete my degree in Australia. I want to pick up my, so from business, I want to pick up bachelor of commerce in banking now. And I want to do it on a one plus two setup. And this is uh, the university I'm looking from, from your portfolio that is now possible. And regardless, uh, even when you're done with the business track and you want to switch your country to Canada instead or the US, you can do that as well. So we've offered you complete flexibility and we're not just talking about you, we're talking about any student across in the remotest possible town in India or South Asia who can access higher education abroad at almost 30 lakhs Indian rupees for all four years combined. That is how affordable we're bringing it. Similarly, so let's say you chose to study in Deakin. So Deakin plus a lot of other universities give you at least 30 different options of majors. So you start with PBA and then you can also decide that once my year one online with upgrad.com in India is completed two and a half lakhs, I want to then move to campus at Deakin or University of Canberra and I want to choose another degree now. So I want to be awarded with Bachelor of Commerce with majors in finance and banking instead of BBA general entrepreneurship. Yes, you can do that. So one general year is articulated to almost 25 majors across the world, Canada, Australia, the United States. Let's talk about STEM. So these are some of the universities and some of the majors that we have if you want to study in Canada. Now let's talk about STEM. So likewise, if you pick up a STEM track with upgrad.com and you finish the, your year one, you can then move to campuses in the United States, which are onshore campuses, Canada and Australia, and then actually choose which degree. If you want to study AI, if you want to study machine learning, if you want to study data science, if you want to study IoT, or you want to study computer science in the United States, then you can finally pick up those majors and then complete your degree. In addition to that, you can also switch the degree. So from a standard BCA year, you can move to a Bachelor of Business in Informatics and specialize in AI or machine learning. So that is the overall vision that we have. That is how flexible we make it for you, right? Let me tell you, like Surbi rightly mentioned, right? These are some of the uh, costing of a degree abroad. So for any degree you do in Canada, it's going to cost you about 80 lakhs. In the US, it's going to cost you beyond one crore. I have studied this, so I know. Uh, in Australia, somewhere your degree cost is going to be about 75 lakhs of Indian rupees. Uh, at least here's what we do. So we give you a subsidized costing of the entire degree where you spend. So you have an option. It is fully democratized. One plus three or two plus two. If you want to go, if you want to study one year in India and then complete the rest of your capstone years of your majors or specialization years on campus in Australia or on campus in Canada, you can actually do that. But then the rest three years will be on the campus course. We give you financial aid. So we're giving almost 10,000 USD of financial aid. And of course, you can choose between different universities in the US where you want to finish this. And if you want to spend two years with us in India on upgrade.com, you save almost 40 lakhs of rupees. So every year, if you study with us, save almost 20 lakhs. But here is the catch. Here is what you need to know. Of course, I mentioned you with the post-study work opportunities are standard as per any other regular degree that you do. 
But there are certain degrees in the world, like computer science, for example, software engineering, so for example, software development, for example, network engineering. All of these degrees are anyway online degrees. By online, I mean you have to be connected to the internet and, and you have to be behind the screen to actually make your code to work, to, uh, to actually do or practice programming. So here's how the hybrid program actually works with us. In India, you're only required to do this, the general years, the theoretical general years only, because I think nobody mentioned there, but you only go to the campus three or four days. I used to go to the campus in the three or four, four days, and that's the maximum you're required to be on campus. The rest of the days you have your study break, you have your research break, you have to equip yourself with exams, you have to finish your assignments. So there are no actually on campus activities that you do. So then what is left? You are behind the screen and you're coding. So might as well save money. But yes, your bachelor's without a physical intervention is incomplete. So what we've done is we let you finish the general years in India, but we let you go and finish the capstone of the specialization years uh, on shore, on campus in Canada, Australia, or the US. Why is that important? Because on campus will get you an access to the faculty members, to the research team, to completing the activities among your peer groups, to, to, to actually using and utilizing the infrastructure of the university to finish your specialization. Now, the last bit, what happens in those two years that you actually spend with us? Here's what happens with them. You attend live lectures on upgrad.com, but we give you internships in those two years to actually experientially develop yourself, to experientially hone your capability. So you are required to choose your majors in the third year in Canada and Australia uh, and US and second year in Australia. So what happens is that you, for the first year or the first two years in your second semester and your third semester in India with us, you actually get a physical internship one, two, we have regularly convened physical boot camps that we do for you to be engaged in networking, for you to be engaged in peer-to-peer -peer research, for you to be uh, sort of uh, fully immersed in all industrial spaces. So we have industrial experts. So let me answer the major question here. Who actually is the one teaching you in the first year on upgrad.com? It is the university faculty team. It is the upgrad instructors from across the world, New York University, New York State University, Penn State University, University of Zagreb, University of London. Plus, we've got industrial experts from Walmart, from Microsoft, from Mintra, from Google. All of these come together and actually teach you because these are some of the most relevant subject experts. That is the amount of experiential and dynamic and industrial relevant curriculum that we actually teach you. Uh, like I mentioned to you, what are some of the characteristics of the curriculum that gets delivered to you in those two years? Of course, it is like, so all these universities abroad license us the curriculum to run for the first year. Second, there's an easy transfer of the post-study work. Uh, uh, sorry, they, 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 there's an easy transfer of the course credit. So if you finish 24 credits in year one, year two, you are directly entering into the second year on campus. So there's very smooth, seamless transfer in the second year. We help you transition. Also, and I'm on the last part of my slide, I mean, my slide deck here. You can even switch between different universities after your first year is complete. So you don't necessarily have to pick up one right now. You can choose between NAU, UFA, York, World, Deakin, Canberra, James Cook, and, uh, you know, you can just between Curtin University and so many more that we're trying to bring on. So every year we bring at least 10 different universities to our portfolio. And the flexibility is that even when you finish one standard business or one standard STEM years, those years are connected to almost 20 different universities across the world to finish your studies on campus after your first year, depending on the environment as in so if i pick up ai and machine learning what is the best country that i can sort of possibly research this in or you know complete my studies in australia us and germany that is all these are some of the most breakthrough countries uh, who've done breakthrough re research 
and, 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 and these are some of the most industrial relevant countries. So which country you choose is highly dependent on which area do you want to do your specialization? So I did my specialization from UPenn in global education entrepreneurship and America was the place to go. Similarly, if I had to go machine learning, Germany would be the place to go. So I am saying, or Australia or the US. So that is how we've designed this. So why we don't pick up every course and why you will not see a lot of courses here. Of course, we've got about 50 odd majors, but why we don't have so many uh, say courses here like psychology, or, or let's say here, you know, uh, Bachelor of Liberal Arts, anything is because when we choose courses, they are very specific to the country. If I'm doing entrepreneurship, is the country conducive and lucrative enough for me to pursue a career in entrepreneurship? And if yes, which all countries are the best countries for, for, for an entrepreneur to thrive in? Those are the countries that we bring on board for somebody like you in Delhi who says, let me finish year one in India, uh, sort of get accustomed and acquainted to the rigorous, intensive, robust nature of curriculum, because studying abroad is not easy. Nobody told you that, but let me make it very sort of clear and forthright with you. It is a very difficult, very intensive, very challenging, very intense process for you to actually go through. There are so many assignments and such in-depth lectures, so many researches that I was a part of. Anyway, it was so difficult because you also have to manage your part-time job so the point is in the first two years you get so much of time to actually acquaint yourself with the curriculum abroad meanwhile we get to so many internships for you to hone your capabilities and know which majors do i want to go after the end of four years you have part-time experience in canada or the us or australia but you also have internship experiences in india relevant to the field and three You've got best of both worlds and you get a three year work visa just like regular normal Canadian student on campus since day one. What what else happens? So let me tell you uh, what else does actually happen. So what else happens is that in your year three and year four, you can actually pick a double majors. You can actually take up more research opportunities like a regular standard student and um, the university has an entire team in place to get you on an part uh, on a part-time job and internship the moment you land. So within two or three weeks is is when you will be asked uh, to join a part-time work if you want to, and the university helps you that. So the eligibility criteria for some of universities are somewhere between seventy percent to sixty percent is the eligibility criteria. The scholarship cred criteria goes up to seven ninety percent. But here's what I want you to sort of know, right? So supposedly you were doing a BBA in Australia or you're doing a BBA in Canada. You would ask me, why is it that Canada year one fee is 2.5 lakhs and the second is 1.55 lakhs? Yes, 1.55 lakhs is actually the cost that we brought. So we have made it so affordable for you to study anywhere across the world. And instead of a 15 lakh academic fee, we brought it down to one tenth, 1.55 lakhs. The first year costs a little more. Let me explain you why. So, and, and uh, uh, you should also, also know this as somebody who wants to study abroad. Whenever you go abroad, like I did, there are so many courses that are zero credit mandatory courses, like academic writing, academic integrity, research methodology, academic uh, referencing, business communication. All of these courses have to be finished on campus in semester one but they've got zero credits. We teach you that entire module. Because here's why. At the end of the first year or second year, when you're actually transitioning to campus, you should be fully equipped like a regular campus student. In the first year, uh, we also help you with the IELTS training and coaching. And of course, there's an end-to-end -end pro processing and servicing of the entire scenario. And for now, in the next year, when naturally it is time for you to go and sort of start studying abroad, uh, we actually just need your grade 12 result. We do not need your IELTS score at all. So at a glance, this is how the program looks like. Uh, one year, a, a, we need your grade 12 result, and, 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 and then you learn on upgrad.com. Second year, you directly enter into the courses of partner university in second year, and then you get the same amount of work visa like you would normally 
This is my email. This is my phone number. If you've got any uh, questions, uh, anything you want to ask me about my entrepreneurial journey, if you want to ask me about my startup, if you want to ask me about uh, any course specific question, any other thing related to this, please feel free to. I would love to take up any question that you have. But uh, this is this, you know, pursuing a vision has been so, I mean, pursuing this vision has been so exciting for me because. Uh, it is the future of higher education. This is what where higher education is going to go after this. It's not going to be much about the degree, but about the vocationalization. What skills are you going to pursue? Your majors, your specializations. That is it for now. Uh, please let me know if I mean uh, the 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 school fraternity, whoever is uh, sort of convening this. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Pranit. Uh, we've had like I, I had a lot of students uh, uh, telling me, ma'am, we would like to put up questions. But so when I've heard all the four resource persons, I guess I mean, most of the questions have been answered. Yet, um, in case we have um, someone, I told them to raise their hand. In case uh, you have any questions left, any students? Okay, Kanishka, please. Uh, sir, how do I know which university is accredited? So. Uh, you search for ABET, that is the affiliation or the accreditation board of engineering and technology. And only ABET accredited universities can actually give out STEM degrees. One of our partners, NAU, is an ABET accredited university. And you can find out more about them on the website. They have a list of all the institutions in the world who are accredited to ABET. But yes, if you have a chance of STEM, doing STEM education, uh, I, I think you should blindly pursue it. It is the future of the world. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Uh, yeah. Anyone else? Please raise your hand in case you have a query from any of the resource persons. They are here. Any of the other students? No, we can't meet. Meet. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes. Good morning, sir. I mean, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I have a question that do considering MBA from any foreign university have greater prospect than in India? Uh, can you actually repeat that for me? Do considering MBA from any other foreign university has greater perspective than in India? Ah. So we, it is a very subjective question and it needs time to answer. But look, MBA, as, it is not much about the MBA as it is about uh, what is your specialization, what is the exact vocationalization you have pursued through the MBA. And then it depends, does India need that? As in, is that in an industry that, you know, that is thriving in India or thriving in the US? or is thriving in Canada. So supposedly, if I do my MBA in AI or machine learning or say HR technology or FinTech or EdTech or something on similar sorts, let me then understand in the entire, on the entire world map, which countries can actually be very lucrative and conducive for pursuing an EdTech company. Which countries in the world actually need EdTech to thrive? And so where do I set up my base? But just so you don't need in about two or three years, there's going to be very little demarcation of does India need this? Does the US need it? The world needs all of what is going to be uh, pursued with AI or machine learning or IoT. And so if you are a subject expert and if you've done MBA to capstone your education and you've got enough business skills that have sh sh sort of honed your business acumen, the entire world needs you. And you know, the only thing is you then decide which country do you want to set up your base in but me, you will not have an option you will be a world citizen and you will have to be serve, serving the world market. The only option is really want to be based in uh, taking into account the taxation, keeping into account the, the, the laws that support your industry and you know the, the different regulations that play along the market di dynamics of which industry you are in. I, I'm not sure if that, I mean I went too deep inside it but to be to be sure about it, if you're pursuing the right degree with the right specialization with the right university, you're going to be required across the world, not just India. Thank you. 
Uh, so we, we have uh, resource persons here. Then we, uh, we, we have uh, Sandhya ma'am, Surbhi ma'am and Rupali ma'am here too in case um, you need to be reminded that. This is in case you think that they're not here, they're here. So in case you have any question for them or anyone right now, okay, I, uh, I saw a hand raised. Could you please raise a hand again so I missed it? Uh, yes, uh, Tanvi said they had raised hand. Uh, Tanvi, please. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, Tanvi. Hi, sir. Actually, I am quite interesting, interested in pursuing law, but at the same time, I also wanted to go abroad. But if I am going to study law in India and uh, for job purpose, and I'm go if if I want to do some join abroad. And obviously, my I will be studying India India's law, and I will not be able to pursue job abroad. And I find a very major problem here. Right. So, ma'am, here's what you need to know to begin with. Law is a graduate degree. It is not a UG degree. So you have to pursue a UG degree or a bachelor's degree first and then pursue a degree in law across the world, including India. To answer the second question, so supposedly you picked up BA LLB or BCom LLB or BBA LLB, what do you do next? So the, whenever you uh, move abroad, so, so UK is one of the most uh, lucrative markets to study law. One of the, I mean, some of the best universities to do law are, I mean, are based in UK. You've got Oxford, Cambridge, UCL, uh, let's see, You've got King's College, some of these most amazing universities to do law. But what you need to know is if you want to practice in that country, you have to do your a barrister's degree also or a barrister's qualification also. But if you want to come back to India and you want to uh, practice law in a corporate setup, then you can do intellectual property law. You can do other international laws. You can do business law. Uh, there, there, there are so many laws that are uniform across the world, like human rights, like child rights, right? So all of these, uh, so, so it depends a lot. But if you want to practice, then of course, it depends on the country. I think Sandhya has, uh, has something to tell you. Ma'am, please go ahead. Thank you, Pranit. Uh, hi, Tanvi. Uh, as Pranit said, when you're considering to study law as a specialization, as a course, especially after your year 12, indeed, it goes without saying UK is the destination because of the common law which we share. So after your year 12, if you study law from UK, you have a provision that you can study a four years law followed by your DPTC or LPC or an LLM degree. And even if you come back to India due to any reason, you can get your degrees under BCI recognized. So that's going to be a provision available for you. And you can work as a legal advisor. Uh, you can work as a corporate legal advisor in the legal firms. Or you can also litigate and fight cases in the courts. That's if you have to come back to India. In case after pursuing your LLB right after 12 in the UK, wherein your LLB is for three years and also for four years, if you want to practice there, you, you can choose two routes. As mentioned, you can either become a barrister or a solicitor. So you have all the provisions. So in a nutshell, you can study undergrad here and then go after your three years of undergrad to UK to study LLB. Or straightforward, you can go to UK to study LLB right after your year 12. We will give you those options where even if you have to come back due to any uncertainty or any reason, your degrees will be validated by Bar Council of India here. So, yeah, that's what okay. I Thank, Thank you, Tanvi. A very, uh, like, let's say you, you must have been um, satisfied with the answer where every detail has been taken care of here in the answer. Uh, we had Dipanshu Lama also uh, so raising the Yeah. Dipanshu, do you have a question? Ma'am, it's a very general question. I just wanted to say that how safe is it for Asians to study in America? Because there are a lot of racially motivated attacks on us. It really scares the, you know, brings chills to my spine. So. So, uh, the punch, is it? Uh, uh, the punch, the punch, sir. Right. right. So, the punch, 
as a student myself in the United States, of course, there are some things that are beyond a human being's control, right? As it would be anywhere in the world. Uh, and as much as I, 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 I would acknowledge the fact that there have been instances uh, like these in the past, it doesn't apply to everybody, of course, as in I stayed there for almost five years. I was working there, studying there. It's a matter of chance, but also I think to some extent your safety is in your control also, as in uh, if, if I mean, look, uh, I mean, all of these things are per pertinent to a specific part of the United States, a specific geography, a specific sort of say, uh, type of the city you're living in or the, the, the community you're living in, if it's suburban or urban, or you're, you are living in a silo, it depends on a lot of these things. But of course, nobody can give you a concrete answer to this. It, it is a matter of chance. And I think your safety to a lot of extent is in your control. And, uh, and I think something that worked out for me is that uh, I would always be very mindful, very conscious, very attentive of who I was around and how long or at, 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 at what time during the day or what time during the night I was actually out. So some things you can always do to help yourself, but then some things are beyond your control and no matter where you go in the world, you know, if there's something that has to happen, has to happen, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, Hia, you, you raised your hand and after that, uh, Aditya also uh, raised Hia first, Hia Singh. Yes. Hi, sir. Uh, my question is very similar to the Panchu's. Um, my, of course, studying abroad is very attractive and it's very, you know, everybody kind of dreams of that. My concern is currently there are a lot of there is a lot of um, racism and violence happening towards basically anyone who's not white. And you can't really predict when you're going to be attacked. So also, uh, I agree with you on most things. The only thing I didn't agree agree on was um, it's in your control to some extent. I, I don't think uh, a, the area even matters. It's just that it's a concern. That's all. Sure. So, of course, to some extent, you're absolutely correct. And I think something that worked for me is that I used to or, you know, live on campus and live near the campus. And so I used to mean that that was a conscious decision that, that I made to actually keep myself super safe. And I mean, there is no answer to this, but of course, as in by what I meant when I said that it is to some extent your control is that I used to be staying on or near campus at most times of the academic year and, you know, would never sort of step out in an area which I have, which which we were told is not really a safe area, and it is a crime-infested area. Race crimes are particularly in some parts of the U.S. In some parts, specifically, sporadically happening. But if it had to happen in an unforeseen, you know, setup or scenario or circumstances, then of course you can never predict, like you said. But there is no answer to this question on how can I how can I prevent it from not happening or what can be done about it. Of course, it is one thing that the federal government uh, of the U.S. is 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 highly uh, committed to ensuring that there's safety for Indian students or any Asian students, and I think they're taking the necessary steps. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. So you've you've made that more than clear, uh, actually, in the previous answer too. So the last question we are taking is Aditya Gupta's. Then Aditya, you raise your hand. Aditya, please. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, sir, I just want to ask that. I am just very curious to ask that. Who is the DU of US? Like the craze students have in India for Delhi University. Which universities like that in US for similar ah, reasons? Good question. 
So, of course, there are <laughs> these are some universities. Of course, very difficult to get into. You have Cornell, you have Columbia, you've got Harvard, you've got Yale, you've got UPenn, you've got UC, uh, the University of California, LA campus. You've got University of Michigan. You've got Duke. I mean, what everybody's crazy about is Stanford and Harvard, of course. Like in the UK, you'd say Oxford, Cambridge, UCL, you know. So, so but craze does not necessarily mean that they are very accessible. Of course, for an Indian student to get into Oxford or Cambridge or Harvard or UPenn is extremely difficult. As in, after almost nine years of working and sort of getting some edtech entrepreneurial experience and having done a BTech is when I could get into UPenn, having shown that I was running a you know you know a startup. So for a normal student, of course, UPenn is a dream. Uh, so is Harvard. So. Yes, I hope I answered your question. Okay, thank you. As I said, that was the last, but I see when the very last I would make it would be Dhruv Rasnogi. With that, uh, others, please reserve your questions. You'll be having, uh, yeah, we will tell you where to uh, send your questions. Let's have Dhruv Rasnogi asking his question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon to all the experts. Uh, just wanted to ask that uh, how do the uh, requ requirements for the admissions vary across co uh, courses? Surbhi or Sandhya, do you want to take that one? Yeah, hi. See, uh, that goes without saying every university have different entry requirements. Yes, uh, but it's not going to be a major difference in terms of entry requirement when it comes for courses to courses. So if any particular university is looking forward for an 85% in year 12 for the business faculty, Similarly, uh, if they're looking for engineering, they would be slightly high, maybe an 88 to 90 percent. However, the point to consider here is if you're looking for economics, you need to have maths in your year 12. If you're looking for engineering, you need to assign uh, this a specific subject. That's where we have to look about it. Again, every country, be it Canada, UK, US, Australia, they have universities uh, with different, different entry requirements available for international students. Is that what you were looking at? Is that what your question was? Ma'am, does uh, audition criteria also varies? Okay, if you're looking for a creative course, something into photography, something into maybe music production, yes, a portfolio. Now, portfolio will differ. It com can comprise of documentary. It can comp uh, comprise of your YouTube video or any, any work which you have done, which you need to furnish alongside with your academic grades and the other documents. OK. Yeah. Uh, thank you for answering the questions. Uh, thank you, everyone on the panel, for enlightening us with your knowledge and expertise. It was a really interesting session. All of us learned a lot from it. A recording of this session will be uploaded on the school's YouTube link for all the students and parents' benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all the resource persons. It was wonderful, really, interacting uh, uh, with uh, you through the students. Actually, I also learned a lot. Uh, and thank you, students, for being uh, so good. And you've been very patient. You've been listening. I, I am, I'm sure you have learned a lot through this session. And uh, many questions have been answered. Any further questions, as told? Uh, would be addressed as you can contact them later on. Uh, the email addresses would be shared with you. Thank you. Thank you all.